Hi everyone, welcome to chapter 3, Amino Acids, Peptides and Proteins. In this lecture, we will be discussing part 1 of this chapter, that is, Amino Acids. These are the learning goals for this chapter. To understand and familiarize yourselves with structures and names of various amino acids. To understand and familiarize with structures and properties of peptides. Ionization behavior of amino acids and peptides and methods to characterize peptides and proteins. In addition to this, you would also familiarize yourselves with the way you purify proteins. Proteins are the most abundant biological macromolecules occurring in all cells and all parts of cells. Some of the functions of proteins are listed here. Catalysis is a crucial function of proteins. Enzymes are proteins that are involved in various metabolic processes. Transport. Transporting oxygen in the blood is performed by the protein hemoglobin. Transporting lactose across the cell membrane is performed by the transporter protein lactose permease. When it comes to structure, collagen is a protein that is involved in connective tissue. Keratin is involved in hair, nails, feathers, and horns. When it comes to motion in your muscle cells, myosin and actin are proteins that are involved in muscle tissue and they are involved in motion. As I said, proteins are the major functional biomolecule and are used for nearly everything, including transport, catalysis, energy metabolism, structure, and so on. Proteins are also polymers of amino acids. To generate a particular protein, amino acids are covalently linked in a characteristic linear sequence. What is most remarkable is that cells can produce proteins with strikingly different properties and activities by joining these amino acids in many different combinations and sequences. From these building blocks, different organisms can make such widely diverse products such as enzymes, hormones, antibodies, transporters, and so on. Also, protein sizes range from as few as 30 amino acids that are linked covalently to thousands of amino acids that are linked covalently. What are amino acids? Amino acids are compounds that has both an amine functionality as well as an acid functionality. Hence the name amino acids. Traditionally, they are called amino acid residues when they are on a protein. Each amino acid has the same architecture and there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids. All 20 of these amino acids are alpha amino acids which means there is an alpha carbon. They have a carboxyl group, like I said, which is why they call the acid and an amino group bonded to this alpha carbon. They differ from each other in their side chains. The group R is the side chain, which vary in structure, size, and electrical charge and which influences the solubility of amino acids in water. In addition to these 20 amino acids, there are many less common ones. Some of these less common amino acids are modified when they are on the protein itself. But in this lecture, we are going to talk about these common 20 amino acids, their structure and properties. You must have realized by now, by looking at the structure, that 
So the alpha carbon has four different substituents attached to it. And hence, amino acids are chiral, or they have chirality, right? A special D or L designation is used to describe the chirality of an amino acid. And because of the tetrahedral arrangement of the bonding orbitals around the alpha carbon, the four different groups can occupy two unique spatial arrangements. And thus, amino acids have two possible stereoisomers. And you should have known by now, right? <clears throat> Since they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, the two forms represent a class of stereoisomers called enantiomers. And you know this by now that there is the R and the S isomers when it comes to enantiomers. And because they have a chiral center, they're also optically active. And hence, they also retain the plane of polarized light. Now, how do you determine the amino acid chirality? And that is by using a methodology called CON. Now, when you have an amino acid written like this, and H is pointing down, not pointing towards you, right? And you would use the abbreviation CON, where CO comes from the carboxylate, R is the R group, and N is the amine group, right? And if you go clockwise, and it is CON, it is an L amino acid, whereas if you go anticlockwise, C-O-R-N, or counterclockwise, it is a D amino acid, right? And most importantly, proteins only contain L amino acids. Several nomenclature systems are used for enantiomers. Like I said, R or S, that is based on con in gold, prelog priority rules, right? Or small d or small l, based on dextro and levorotatory or plus or minus, right? The D and plus means clockwise, L and minus means counterclockwise rotation. D and L still use on a lot of older drugs. The D and L are discouraged because they can be confused with the capital D and capital L, the system used with amino acids alone. So, when it comes to amino acids, we will be using D or L amino acids and will not be using the small d and small l, all right? Like I said, all amino acids are chiral except glycine. Glycine is an amino acid where the R group is H. So it doesn't have a chiral center. It is diastereomeric. Now, Special nomenclature, like I said, has been developed to specify the absolute configuration of the four substituents of the asymmetric carbon, which is this one, right? The absolute configurations of simple sugars and amino acids are specified by the DL system. When I say DL, it's capital D and capital L system. And this is based on the absolute configuration of three carbon sugar glyceraldehyde a convention proposed by Emil Fischer, and hence Fischer projections, right? For all chiral compounds, stereoisomers having a configuration that is related to L-glyceraldehyde are designated as L. So if uh, a configuration uh, is similar to L-glyceraldehyde, it will be designated as L. <clears throat> And if the configuration is similar to D-glyceraldehyde, it will be labeled as D. The functional groups, in this case, of L-alanine are matched with those, those of the sugars, right? L-glyceraldehyde by aligning those that can be interconverted by simple one-step chemical reactions. The carboxyl group of L-alanine occupies the same position about the chiral carbon as does the aldehyde group. For example, the L-alanine carboxylate is at the place of the aldehyde. 
Now, one of the reasons, because the aldehyde is readily converted to a carboxylic, carboxylate group by oxidation. Historically, the similar L and D designations were used for levorotatory, where rotating plane polarized light to the left, and dextrorotatory, rotating plane polarized light to the right. However, not all L amino acids are levorotatory, and the convention uh, shown may not work for amino acids. Right? So by Fisher's convention, by relating these amino acids to the three carbon sugars, we will be using this D and L convention for all amino acids. Hi everyone, 